on how to start Google uh, Data Lab that is going to be used for the, our next meetup. So I'm going to share my screen with you. A second. Going to console cloud. Make sure you are logged in with your uh, account, your Google account. Another way to do it is go here and um, and log in to your account. Or if you have never done it before, go to Google Cloud, Google for Google Cloud. Here and click on console. You'll have console on the right here. You and then you'll get to the same window. Okay, so we have we have here the cloud shell. Click on the cloud shell. If you have data lab, you can connect to it. If you if you don't have data lab, then you need to create it. And I'll show you how you can create it. It's now connecting. Wait one second. Usually it's fast a bit because of the live event. Um, and let me show you, meanwhile, Google Data Lab. It's basically, um, it's uh, based on the Jupyter Notebook. So this is a good way to use Jupyter Notebook for all the things that you would like to do and run it interactively and see what's going on. I'm using it with machine learning. I saw now that Google, uh, let's try it again started uh, allowing a um, data lab to be generated with a GPU. So this is great. Okay, so what you need to do, you need to do data lab, we need to type data lab, create, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Never mind, whatever I want here. So now a new virtual machine is gonna be generated. So if you go to computer, It's gonna ask me more question. Is it like what what zone do I want it? So this one's specifically 31, it's the east of the US. You can use whatever you want. And I don't know why it's so slow today. Let's give it a few seconds. But this is another example of data lab. In Google you can create a virtual machine by itself, but this virtual machine specifically um, is connected to the data lab. Once you have the data lab, you are connecting to it and you'll be able to, to see the switch through the browser. Ah, nice, it's already, okay, hide that one. In a few seconds, you will be able to browse to localhost 8081 and see the data lab uh, notebook uh, browser. It's like the, the, the root of all the notebooks have it's super slow I'm sorry so if I click it before time that's what I'm gonna see but if I wait for a few more seconds I'll be able to see the data I will give it a few seconds the other thing that you need to do maybe for the first time it will ask you uh, to enable the API in some way usually Google will walk you the the process of enabling apis so just do whatever uh, google is asking you to do and then you'll be able to to create a data lab by yourself okay i can open for us my this data lab so i'm going to start this machine it was off ah okay this one is on so we can log into this one Not yet. So this is the machine that was created for the data lab. If you are not interested in it anymore, you can delete it in one second. The prices for this kind of actions are very minimal. It really depends on the kind of machine you are creating. So this one specifically was created, let's see how many CPUs. With one, one CPU, 
And once you shut down the machine, you can edit the machine and add more CPU, so more whatever you want. I'm usually uh, keeping the machine in with low CPU when I'm not using it, and when I'm using it, I'm increasing the CPU to have a better performance. Okay, never mind. It was created, so I'm going to terminate the process, and I'm going to say data lab connect. Uh, I'm going to take this awkward name, write it here, enter. Okay, now it's connected. And I'm going to wait for it to connect to it. I don't know why it takes tons of time. It may be because I'm in, because I'm in, I don't have any idea why I cannot connect. Let's try to connect to this one. Mm. You cannot connect to both of them at the same time. It has to be one of them. Because it's in the same port. Let's try not request forwarding. Yeah, because the other one was connecting to it. Usually it's much more straightforward than what I'm doing right now. Okay, that's the way it is. You can either go from here and ask for port 8081, 80, 80, or you can click. Once you do that, Once you see that, you see all the notebook, you can create a new notebook and work it on port TensorFlow as TF. Okay, keep on going. I don't know why it's super slow today, but this, um, basically it's not, a, it's not a difficult process, it's a quick process. That's it, shutting it down. Leaving the page, going here, control C, turning off the machine, both machines. Delete this machine, it's going to be deleted. Going to delete this machine because I don't need it. Okay, thank you. I hope it's helpful and I'm sorry for the delay in the line. Okay.